generally the ones we get through, the, you get the odd big ones going past if you're out deep water fishing, say trolling for blue marl and stuff like that. And um, you'll get like a, uh, like a 30 kilo or 40 kilo one any time of the year. And they're the ones that are the, into their second year, I guess. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but the ones that are um, we, we're having now, the little ones, they're the first year ones. Okay, they grow pretty quick. Yep. So we'll focus on uh, that at the moment. But as, as I keep saying in the fish reports, like, uh, a few weeks ago, they were like just, just on 60 centimetres. And then uh, now they're probably around 70, getting up around 70, I'd say, this week. And then in, by probably, um, say, first or second week of December, they should be up around about a metre. So that's how quick they grow. And they're the size that are really good fun, especially on Lucky. Okay, so... Good size fillets off them too. Yeah, good size fillets, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice fillets. Um, yeah, dolphin fish are just probably one of the best eating pelagic fish, especially on the barbie as well. Um, okay, we'll look at the gear. So, um, most of you must have, if you want to have some fun, okay, that's where it starts at. Most of you must have a, um, a fairly light outfit like this type of thing here, like a four or five thousand, 20 pound braid or 30 pound braid, and a sort of a 10 to 20 pound rod or 12 to 25 pound, sort of six to 12 kilos. Um, and this is for like flicking your plastics or, um, actually we didn't talk about, we're gonna do bait fishing too, by the way, sorry, pigeon baits. It's in the zoo somewhere. Um, and for flicking out your, um, your bit of pillies, cubed up pillies. So having a bit of fun, that's the sort of outfit that I like to use. I don't know about you, Yeah, sort of yeah mine's very similar. I go a little bit lighter on, a bit lighter on everything. But um, yeah, and that's just, if you're the first boat at a fat of a morning and you can afford to throw a bit of um, like cubed up pillies and stuff like that, you can smash them before any other boat turns up. In the dark too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, they start biting straight away. So first boat, there's the goal. Um, the next size outfit up something like that, which is like it's a five thousand actually, um, on about a sort of P two to three rod, or P two to four. Um, that one's got thirty pound braid on, just a little bit stronger. Um, I'll actually even troll with that, but I'll troll really small skirter lures like that fella here, like that strip. Very small style. Like that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. And it'll be right at the back. And most of these reels hold three hundred meters of braid, so you've got plenty of braid. Okay. Um, next one up, that's also good for cubing as well. Your next size up, you've got something in that size. So anything in this size will work, guys, okay? Um, that's a little bit bigger again. Um, that's got, uh, I think, 50 pound braid on it. That's an 8,000 size reel, I think, or 6,000, 8,000. Um, and I use that for just chucking out a live here around the fads, okay, with unweighted. And the lead is about 60 pound on that one. The lead on the other two are about, is around 30 pound fluorocarbon. Um, and then my troll rods will, oh actually just getting back to that one, I just want to use the pass of that bait runner there. How many people here use bait runners at all? Okay, so bait runners are really good for dolphin fish as well, especially if you're fishing pillies and that. Um, you just throw it up from the fad or near the fad, whatever, and put it in free spool and they just spin off, take the bait and they scream off and then you just turn the handle and, and you click it in the gear and it sets the hook. Typical bait runner type feature, you're welcome, welcome to that later if you don't know about it. Um, quite a light tip rod, so the tip's quite light. Um, they take it down. The fish are generally unweighted or very small sinker when you're fishing uh, baits. But that's a sort of similar setup to the other one. I think they've got 30 pound braids. I think that's 30, yeah. Yeah, so just, we've got a deal on those two. Um, and then my next one's like my troll rods. So um, if you don't have any troll overhead rods, spin rods are fine, like that type of size. And um, you're talking like a, that's a 10,000 with 50 pound braid. And the rod's sort of like a 50. Uh, P three to five sort of thing, um, or the TLD combo that Stuart's got there. So, do most people here have like a troll TLD type combo? Yeah. That you would use. Um, so, like it's an overkill for the little dolphin fish. I can tell you that now. Um, you wouldn't know it was on there. Probably you think it's the lure on the end at the moment. But when those bigger ones come around about another month's time, and they're sort of 1.2 meters and around. 10 kilo average, um, that's, you need to get up something like that in your troll gear because there's a chance you might get a 15 kilo one jump on or a 20 kilo wahoo. Um, and that one's got 30 pound mono on it and um, rigged up the wind on leader. I think they're on a deal we'll talk about later. Yeah, they yeah. are, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's sort of like the tackles. Any questions on the rods and reels at all? Everyone sort of understand that? You probably mostly got all that. Okay. Um, what sort of hook would you use? 
on hooks I'm using um, two sizes. So if I'm cubing, I'm using like about a 4.0. I think you got those in your bags, guys. Um, I love Shinto's, they're Japanese steel, they're very sharp and very good. Is anyone using those hooks yet? Yeah, if you are, you'll know how good they are. Yeah. They're very good. Um, and for live baiting, I'm using about a 6 or 7 or even 8.0 in the, in the same style. Um, I don't use circle hooks, um, you don't need to. They're very aggressive guys, they're so aggressive. When, when they're on, they're going to smash her, so it doesn't matter what you get. And I don't know if you know about dolphin fish, but they have a very, uh, like, on the more than one set, I think, two, maybe two rows of very, very little tiny pin teeth, but they're very sharp and they rust, rust your line like Taylor. So um, you just get one little dolphin fish with that size and your 30 pound lead is stuffed. You gotta, if it's taking it down its throat, that is. Uh, so you've got to retie your hook. So always check your leader when you get this one dolly. Okay. Bigger ones are even a lot worse. Um, so getting back to the gear, um, when you get a dolphin fish to the boat, they're pretty crazy. Uh, the little ones aren't too bad. You just grab them, put them under your arm and get the hook out and keep it or whatever. The bigger ones though are crazy. Has anyone had a crazy dolphin fish in their boat set? Mm. They're, um, they smash your boat pretty bad. Yeah. So there's I like this guy, this guy say, you know, you have a bit of rope made up with a hook on it and I see their half, tail and yeah. bend them in half and hook it around their mouth. Um, look, you've got, to get it, you've got to get a hold of it to do that, which is the hardest part, okay? And I haven't got time to do that, so when I get the dolphin fish on, uh, that's the first thing that comes out. My mate always says, don't hit my boat. Um, but, um, and it's like, boing, 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 hitting their head, it sounds like their heads are, I don't know, like steel. But um, they're very hard to, to make them not so happy. Um, put them to sleep, it's very difficult. You've got to whack them a lot of times. And sorry about the greenies on here. But anyhow, <laughs> you, are, you have to do it right. Um, but the easiest way, guys, is um, to have, it's a bit hard when you're using baits. You can quickly cut your leader off, your hook off, but you need to get them straight into an esky or icebox or slurry, or if you've got a, a luxury of a, a well in your floor, <coughs> Just open the hatch, throw him straight in there, it'll flap his way in there, and slam it closed and cut the leader and retie the hook on. It's the quickest way. And then worry about getting the hooks out later. And if you've got a, um, if you're trolling skirts, same scenario. Have a few skirts. Um, all you do is you, because you've got the hooks in there too, and if you've got two hooks, it's even more hard to get the hook out, double hook rigs. I'd say in dollies, just use single hook rigs all the way. Um, and um, when you get them to the boat, you need to, um, you know, I would do that or just um, get them straightened out well again, close the lid or close the esky lid and unhook the snap and get it out later and put another lure on and get it straight back out there again. That's the secret to catching dolphin fish. I wouldn't sit there and try and tie them up and do this and do that. Too, too hard. And bigger ones, like we've caught them 20, lots of 20 kilo ones, 15 kilo ones, like you can jump on them and they'll flick in the air. It'd be like a worse than a bronco. So, um, yeah, <laughs> they're aggressive. Um, yeah, especially those big bulls. So be careful. Um, so you need one of those or something in that scenario. Uh, good pair of pliers, obviously you want to get the hooks out if you do want to do that scenario, but later you get it out. They go to sleep pretty quick in ice, as we all know. Um, good size fillet knife. Um, crimping pliers, now a lot of people are scared to crimp their own leaders and stuff. But when you're out there, if you go to recrimp your hooks back on or something like that, um, I suggest just having a cheap, this is a cheap pair of pliers, like you guys get these for about 28 bucks or something, something like that. And, and just a couple of size common crimps that we use on like a 100 pound litre or 130 pound litre. And just have it in the boat because it's so quick and easy. You just you know, cut off the hooks, put another one on. If it's chafed above the hooks, you just get to put that lure back in the water. Just cut a piece off it and recrimp the line again. Um, it's so easy. So just, it's cheap as, just crimps like, 10 bucks or 8 bucks or whatever, and just have a couple of sizes and that in the boat, ready to roll. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper having mm. a little bit of terminal stuff and rigging mm. gear than losing the lure on the next run past. And so. it takes a couple of minutes to set it up again. Yeah. Okay. Um, leader, uh, so in leader, okay, I think I could tell this all the time, but um, with leader, please remember your fluorocarbon is a lot more abrasion resistant than your normal leader. So fluorocarbon, uh, 25 pound or 30 pound fluorocarbon is like 50 pound mono in abrasion resistance, even though it's a lot thinner, it's very tough. Uh, so it's harder to bite through. If you try and, uh, my teeth aren't good enough these days, but if you try and bite through um, 
50 pound mono and, and say 30 pound fluoro, I bet you the fluoro is harder to bite through. Just try it next time if you've got the teeth to do it. Then you understand how abrasion resistant it is, you know. So it allows you to use a lighter leader. So on these lighter rods, I'm using like um, 30 pound fluorocarbon or 25 even, um, and 40 at the most. Uh, and that's why I'm flicking my, my pillies in or whatever. And um, then on the bigger ones, I'm always using heavier, but just in mono, so like 60 or 80, whatever it takes. Um, swivels, uh, make sure you use ball bearing snap swivels. Don't use standard snap swivels when you're trolling. It's really important that you Troll with ball bearing swivels. I still know about tangles. Yeah, yeah, we know about tangles, all right. So, but um, they're just a lot more free spinning, and um, just under the constant load as well while you're trolling, mm. they just they save a better. lot of headaches later. Yeah, a lot of line twist and stuff gets eliminated. Because so. when when you get two lines cross over, or you get a bit of weed on your hooks in, and you're trolling skirts, so you're not watching what you're doing, and you might turn or something, and the weed sort of goes across and hooks the other line. And then you got it's still weight in your rod, and you're still working, but it's actually not the weight of the lures, it's the weight of the lines combining. Yeah. And then you realize you got a big tangle, and it's a pain in the ass. Um, the other thing, too, guys, is the amount of people, the amount of our customers, and including, not, my, not me, but <laughs> guys I've been on the boat with, that don't do a snap up. I don't know how that works, but yeah. they hook on their lure, they anxious, they drop it out, and then they might have the fish that's sitting out there as a big bull dolphin fishing and then the line just comes apart and you wind in and it snaps open because they've left it open and it's actually stretched right out. So they fought the fish the whole time with the snap open. So um, make sure you do your snap up, just a simple thing, very simple. Um, that's where you do it. That's about it. Probably just, like, and yeah, just don't rush putting your lures in. Like when you're trolling, make sure it's sit, like when you put it in, I've always put it in beside the boat and make sure it's working first. Not tangled up, not fouled on itself or anything. Everything hooks are sitting upwards and then let it out slowly after that. A lot of guys just throw it in the, out of the side and it's all tangled and fouled and you know, the lure's not working correctly the yeah. whole time. So, the, I think, guys, is um, braid versus mono for trolling. So, how many people do you troll with braid? Okay, and you guys all happy with it, right? Maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I'm very happy with it um, and I troll. I only with braid nearly. Um, I do have TLD set up with just mono, which I use for my kids from long back, and I still use it myself too, similar to, to what that one there is. Um, it's fairly popular, um, but I just find with braid I can use uh, lures to get to a, their better swimming potential because there's less drag in the water, so it's more free. Um, particularly, and I've told I didn't bring it up today, but I've told his uh, dollies up on divers as well over, over the years, um, but. Obviously skirts are better, but, but with braid, um, two ways of doing your braid is if, if you've got big reels like these, you can, what we call a top shot, so you can just put on um, 100 metres on top, which is your favourite not to do this to it? Um, half, half, either tie like a good FG, or um, you can just do like two doubles and then cats pour them together, which is pretty effective as mm. well. Yeah. Yep. So, and just you just put on 100 metres of um, braid on top of your mono. And, uh, and that, I believe the hookup rate's better, as long as your rod tip's fairly light, not too stiff. Um, and I've got uh, customers that are really good fish shows and um, they just keep, keep, when they get down to about 40 metres or something, they just replace the 100 metres again. And it seems to work really, really well. But the, being able to hold your fish um, on the line seems to work better than, you don't lose as many fish, I believe. Yeah, because I always get a big bow in your line when you've got mono particularly with marlin and stuff, and they'll do a lot of jumping, and they can, if they haven't got the weight of the line, they can throw the hooks a bit easier, I believe, especially if they're jumping with the bow on the line. Uh, so braid's very direct. It's like there's not much of a bow. It's like the only direct always with the fish. Yeah, it so, cuts through the water a lot. Yeah. So it's a lot thinner. It's, it's probably half, half the thickness, if not it, less. Less, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's a lot yeah. more less less drag going mm. through the water. Okay, so... Question. Mm. If something a while you smash you, you mm. travelling and that were on the freight train in two, mm. or that brain is standard, you it, just... Yeah, it will, but... No uh, shot, a sudden shot, it's yeah. no stretch. Yeah, 100 percent So I, I failed to tell you, tell you guys, you've got to use a wind on leader or a six to eight metres, so 80 or 60, whatever. Yeah, you still need a bit of stretch. Yeah, you need sure. stretch, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it can't just be braid to the sort of. <laughs> so you've got to have yeah. a very, very long meter. Eight meters. Eight meters. Yeah, yeah six, six meters minimum. Yeah. yeah. Most steel wind ons, I think, are six, about six, six meters. Six yeah. meters here. Yeah. Yeah, they're perfect. And a wind on leaders, um, I think you guys have got one in your bags there, but 100 pound, but generally when I'm trolling, I'm um, using uh, 80 to 150, but 100 is a really good size. Yeah. And it's got plenty of shock, and it, you can uh, use that directly onto your. Uh, just put a little uh, little bimini twist or whatever in the end of your braid, it's a short one, and uh, it shows you on the back of the thing how to do it. Oh, this one doesn't actually show you how to do it. Yeah. We can show you how to do it. We can show you how. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. Uh, and just loop it through, loop it through, pull it down, and um, happy days, you know. And it's, you can do it out at sea, it's very, very quick. And then just lift your pliers, you snap on and you snap, and away you go again. Because in Dadley, you are going to get caught with your lines around the prop. You're going to get people with two fish on and one cuts off the other line and or you get caught or fish goes around the fat or whatever it might be there's lots of scenarios where you're going to get broken off and if you lose that leader mate then you're and you have another leader you're up the creek because it will shock will break your line if you don't yeah. if you get directly to the sap yeah. Yeah. um any questions on that at all guys just trying to get the gear all right first and we'll tell you how to do it okay <laughs> yep okay so um probably about it on the gear oh just in braids too there's a couple of new braids on the block. Actually, we've always got new stock coming in, but um, this is a new one out. Um, I don't know if you guys, how many guys watch the guys from Cast on YouTube? Any of you guys watch those guys? They're pretty cool dudes. Really good photography, by the way, too. Um, and they're doing that with Tackle World, like in... Con, con, conjunction. No, not conjunction. Yeah. <laughs> co collaboration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so they designed this braid, and it's uh, really good stuff, but I'll, I'll just pass it around and you can see how good it is. But um, they do a cast braid and a um, jigging braid, but it's exceptionally thin. And braid is all about thickness, you know. Um, there's another new braid up too, which is grappler. So grapplers, um, how many people use Oshia braid from Shimano? Anyone use that at all? A couple of you do. Um, it's very thin as well, so it's the thinnest braid on the market. In jigging and... Um, and casting lures, I'd say 100% it's the go-to. Uh, but for trolling, I probably would be going for strength more than thinness. Like, it's thin enough as it is, so you don't need to worry about competitive fishing lines. So. But I'll just pass this around. Um, this is 40 pounds, or 38.6. Just another thing too, guys, if you pull on this line, this is what happens when you don't put your braid on properly too. When you get other guys that buy the braid, we always prefer to do it for you when you buy a reel of this, but um, a lot of guys will want to take it home and do it, and they don't put a little bit of mono backing on the back of it. And when you put on like 300 metres onto your spool, has anyone ever had the case where you've done that and locked the drag up and it doesn't do anything, it doesn't wind the fish up when you go fish on? Yeah, the braid actually so the spins braid. on so the spool. Like like that's 300 metres on there, it, it's yeah. spinning on the spool. Yeah. So that's you what happens on this. Spool you've got to put mono yeah, behind right. it, mate, so it's yeah. like stretch and locks in. and. Um, it's actually not a bad display. It's a good center. example. Yeah, yeah, good example. Yeah. That's what happens to your spool. And people say, oh, my drag's broken. But it's not the drag, it's the line spinning on the spool. It happens at a lot of places, our position, they, and they put their line on for the customers. And we fix it. <laughs> um, okay, so okay, so that's the gear. Um, a couple other little things, housekeeping on your boat is, um, when you're trolling, Please understand you're doing a lot of running. Your motor's going like 10 hours a day with the time you're out there. Make sure you've got sufficient fuel. Um, and understand your weather, that's probably the other thing to worry about. Uh, we've got current, guys, so current at the moment, there's no current. It's, it's dropped right off at the moment. It's a little bit, but not much. It's uh, running at like less than a knot out of the 50s, which is, it should be running about two knots at the moment. Uh, we did have two knots a few weeks ago, but it's, when you don't want current, it's a, you know, it's, uh, it's always raging, so if you're bottom fishing, but when you want it now for trolling, and it really gets the warm water in and really gets things happening, it goes dead. <laughs> it's going to get better. I know it is. Just uh, at the moment, it's not, not the right current. Uh, in saying that, there was marlin caught yesterday. Yeah, there was a few good marlin caught, caught in the last yeah. week or so. And heaps lot, of dollies on the front. Heaps of little still. dollies here. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it'll all start happening. Um, what speed do you uh, We're trolling at about, with dolphinfish, um, I caught them, actually trolled them for Wahoo at like 10 knots. Um, but generally speaking, around that sort of six to eight knots.
just want your lures working nicely, really. Yeah, you don't want to bounce so, it out of the water or cartwheeling or anything like that. So in saying that, we'll start the lures. So um, with dolphinfish, as Stuart said before, um, you control lures that size. If you've got light gear and haven't got any heavy gear, it's very small, but a big dolphinfish will smash all over that. And so a marlin too, as well. Um, and then, or this, this is like another version in a little, um, this is a beautiful lure, a little um, skirt lure. And I'll pass those couple around. I'll leave past them, tell me. Um, and that's about the size. I wouldn't have any smaller than that, really. Uh, I have caught them on feathers too, guys, in small, on small feathers. That's why I brought them up. I'm like that. Not intentionally, but the guys have been on the boats with, they didn't have much selection. <laughs> so we threw out feathers and we caught dolphin fish. I've done it a few times now. Um, but generally speaking, most of your skirts are what, they, what we call 150 mil, which is six inch, so that sort of size skirt, okay? Could you go up to eight inch? You can go up to eight inch, 100%, um, even for the little dolphin fish. As I said, they're aggressive, they don't care. They'll smash, uh, they'll smash a big skirt. Most things, yeah. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Um, but it just seems to be the happy size for the dolphin fish on, say, uh, 15 kilo mono or, or up to 6 to 80 pound braid. Yeah. Um, I think the other big thing is lure placement. Like your smaller yeah. lures generally run a bit further back and your bigger lures closer to the boat. A bit more commotion in that mm. white water. And um, your smaller ones cause less of a disturbance. So you want to have them out in that cleaner, cleaner bluer water. How yeah. far back when you sleep, yeah. when you're dropping them further? So, back? yeah. I'll draw, I'll, I'll, draw, I'll draw it for you. Um, just forget about the rest of this for a sec. So. If I just draw this separate to that, okay? So if this is your boat, can everyone see that all right? Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> I'm coming this way. Sorry, Stu. Oh. Okay, thanks for letting me know that too, boy. Okay, so um, if this is your boat and that's the back of it and that's the front of it there, not a very good looking boat. Um, most of you should have rod holders in the back corner or just in that back area here, or maybe on the, on the transom. Um, and most of you will have a, an angled rod holder next up. Okay, so four rods. And some of you will have a little bait tray there, maybe with a couple of rod holders on it. That's generally the most common design boats. Um, so generally, and some of you will have outriggers too, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, generally speaking, if this one here would be my sh what we call a short corner, but on dolphin fish, you're not fishing for marlin, you're fishing for dolphin fish. So instead of running your line out 15 metres for your first one, you might drop it back 25. It depends if you're using a teaser or not. So how many people here use teasers, like birds, stuff, that sort of stuff? Okay, if you do use a teaser for, for dolphin fish, make sure you use a bird teaser with a daisy chain line. It seems to work the best, I find. Um, they come in, come in on it pretty, pretty hard. Um, the strip teasers, which are those long strips with the fish Print on the side, they're really good as well. Um, you can run those off a little dredge. Um, but with dolphin fish, um, if they're in the area, they're going to hone in straight away now. So that one there's maybe 30 metres back or 25 metres. Um, this one here, I'm running back about 40 metres, so 30, 40. Um, then this fellow here is going to be, not that it sits like that, it sits straight, but I don't drop draw on top of that. Um, this one here is around about, um, say, 50. And this fellow here is about maybe 60. And if you want to put another one out of the bait board, the little one Stewie's talking about, that might be 75 back. And everything should turn inside each other when you turn that way or that way, okay? And the secret is to, to drop back your little ones, um, like know your start point and then work your other lures off that. Does that make sense? Yeah, like put your yeah. furthest one out first. <clears throat> generally yeah, yeah, and then right. put them back to it yeah because if you put this one out first and this one can get tangled on this one and all that stuff but um if you put the furthest one out first the last thing that goes in the water should be your teaser if you run a teaser mm. and that's the first thing that comes out when you hook up yeah yeah does that make sense so your teaser shouldn't be more than about 10 meters on the boat it should be even closer so run it pretty close and it'll like sit maybe you know somewhere around here and the fish will come in on it and um, hopefully hit one of these lures on the way through. Sometimes the fish come from this way, um, or you could run out of the top and they turn around and come back up, or they'll, they'll come up to your lures and, and attack them. So 
if you get hooked up on like the 50 or the 75 and 60 gap behind it, how are you going to pull that back into and go tangle, you know, really get into uh, the top of the 50 or top of the issue? I'll leave them out and try yeah. and get another one. <laughs> Um, but you know, you take the chance, and if you've got a crazy fish and it's a big one, you'd wind them up, mate, for sure. Yeah. If they're, um, if it's just a common little fish, I'll try and steer it yeah. through or around or whatever, and you've got chances the other ones hooking up. Dolphin fish are, are generally in schools all the time, but not the bigger ones. They're lines a little bit, but they're generally in schools, and they'll, you'll get like all the lines to take off. Yeah, Wahoo did the same too, Eddie. This time of the year, um, and. I, I did a scenario down here, oops, so um, this is like a current line, okay, so and the current's going to the south at two knots, so um, when you troll into the current, um, first you've got to rev up your motors a bit more so you use a bit more juice, um, second thing is the lures tend to work harder because they're pushing against the current so you know you're actually, if you've got two knots of current and then you're doing Six knots, we actually lures are doing like eight knots. Does that make sense? They're working harder. So um, my scenario would be to go up as far as I can and come down with the current, and I might zigzag back up on an angle, sort of about that angle, you know, 45 degrees, whatever, and keep working my way back up against the current. Would be the only time I go against the current. I'd never go straight into the current, um, but I like to work down with the current um, and. When you see like that, that area there, the two blue spots here, you know we get that like really um, scummy coral spawn where there's a brown stuff on the on the on your um, current lines, and generally there's a lot of weed and sometimes there's a log or something floating in it. That's where the dolphin fish would be hanging at their most in that current line. You might not see that for maybe two or three or five kilometres along that current line, and the current line is pretty easy to see because normally ripply one side and clear water the other, or or you'll see that the debris just sort of floating along. It's never straight, it's always like, like that sort of thing. Um, because the wind pushes it, or it just does, does that. <laughs> uh, so there might be like two k's or three k's apart there. Uh, so you just sort of work with it, you just, um, so it's start up here, sorry, and come down with it. And if I'm in that area there and I get a strike, um, I might, by the time you get fish in here down here with the current, um, I'll either burn back up away, don't go through the middle of it, burn around it and come back down again or um, I might just sort of zigzag my way back up again and then come back down with it but I'll probably pull the lines in if it wasn't too much hassle and burn back up there because that seems to be the way that they're hitting. It, it, okay, I would probably troll back up first time. If I didn't get a hit against the current then I would never troll back against the current again. I'll, I'll then concentrate going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's got to work it out on the day, sort of thing. Um, and sometimes there's a water change in that current too. One side might be 26, the other side's 24. It can be a two, we have two degree drop sometimes, you know. But generally uh, speaking, it's more um, a debris type current line than a, than a water change, or a color in the water change, maybe. Um, but yeah, when you see stuff coming up, um, that's when you, get ready, you might just get your speed perfect, check your lines are right. If you see something in distance, um, be prepared for it. Don't just sort of go looking at it and driving at it and not realising that your lines are tangled behind you because you just blow on it, you know. So be prepared when you get down here. Um, any questions on that at all? No? Okay, cool. Yeah, you've got to be, keep your eyes out for anything floating, like yeah, might a be a balloon, might be a log, might be yeah. anything. But it's going to attract little bait and stuff like that, and then there's going to be large predatory fish around, like a dolly uh, or. A, has anyone like, had a session on, on a log at all yet? On a out here, has anyone ever found the, the honey hole? Okay, I've done it about three or four times in my life out <laughs> off the Gold Coast, and a few times at North. Um, and um, the last time, about two years ago, we actually were down off Tweed, and we were deep dropping in about um, 300 metres deep, just south, of, about off probably um, Cabrera. And um, about 200 metres from us, we're just dripping along, and we and the current was raging, and we we're reversing into the current, and then we see this thing sticking out of the water about maybe a metre and a half, and what looked to be about that round, and it was black, and we thought it was a submarine because it was just going along like that, past us, and it was a sub. <laughs> we don't like the part of the thing that sticks up, and. Um, 
We didn't know what it was. Anyhow, we got our lines up and we went out to have a look at it and it, uh, we, we didn't get close enough to it because we didn't want to scare it if there's any dolphin fish there. So we went over to it, we realised it wasn't a sub. We threw out a heap of pillies as I always do when I see something floating in the water. So that's your, that's your go to to see what's happening. So just chop up some pillies in little tiny pieces and throw it out like you're building up for spotty mackerel. And, um, and then when the whole water just goes all these different colours, you know, hey, hey, it's it, we're going to smash it. And then you got to decide we're going to troll lures. That day we troll lures, we didn't cast anything at it. We put all the skirts on our, our rigs and um, troll past this thing. And every time we troll past it or, or near it, it would just start, we'd get like four or five hooked ups at a time. And it was mayhem actually, it was really mayhem. I got on video actually, it's incredible. I was with some uh, Asian friends of mine. <laughs> this was a fiasco. Anyhow, um, we bagged out. We got heaps of dollies, and they're all sizes from little 60 centimetres to probably 1.3 or 1.4 metres, so 15 kilos or more. And we lost the, as many as they caught because I, I just drove the boat and let them go crazy. And um, then we went out to see what it was, and it was actually a piece of bamboo uh, sitting vertical in the water, and, the, and that's all it was. One piece of bamboo, about probably 100 mil across but it was about probably eight or 10 metres long. So down the water went way, way, way down. And just the top and sort of sticking out of the water like this and as it's drifting along, perfectly perpendicular, very unusual. And that held like thousands of dolphin fish. So um, that's all it takes. So you've got to keep it, your eye open. Another time we found a, a log that was about the size of a 44 gallon drum. Um, we were bottom fishing for pearlies, again, down Tweedway in about 100 metres. And, we just saw this thing in the distance, there's a glass out, and it was in January, I think, and I said, that I just knew straight away big dolphin fish all over it, because that's the time of year you're going to smash it. And we went over there, and same deal, we threw some pillies in, and we caught, there was massive wahoo, there was dolphin fish, there was um, a lot of sharks, there was cookie cutters, those little tiny sharks, there was uh, rainbow runners, there was everything, it was just uh, like a big fish tank. So you've got to try and keep your eye open, as Stuart said, um, when you troll along here, look for anything in the distance, no matter what like that log there floating around, because it would just be a, a honey hole. The trouble is, like that day we, with the dolphin fish, we ended up way, so I'm actually got fuel, as I was saying, we ended up down about nearly half way to Brunswick Heads by the time we finished our three hour session of having a great time. Yeah, so um, that's really important this time of the year to, to keep a visual out. When you're trolling around a fad, okay, this is a fad. Um, and the current's running at two knots. Uh, please remember that the rope is not going to be straight down, it's going to be back that way. So most of dolphin fish are going to be on this side of the fad. There's not going to be much on this side. Has anyone ever experienced that around fads, even when you're bait fishing, where the fish are not, um, not on that side of it, if it's a strong current? Has anyone had that experience yet? You will. Uh, and, it's, and as soon as you get to about here, you don't get any more fish, they just dissipate because they're all up here, so you need to go further up and keep going next drift, go further up again until you find how far up they are and that's then we, we start working back and you get a lot more time on the spot. So remember that too, okay? Um, you'll also see if you get a two or three or four boats around like and you're trolling past the fad um, and there's boats going up and down, they will dis they'll sort of break off and it'll be a group over here maybe 500 metres away to the, to the east or to the southwest or whatever. And so sometimes they go down as well, so you'll see them on the sounder. They will come up, most fish will come up about 20 or 30 metres from up to your lure, from, from down. Um, and when you have marlin fish, they come up 100 metres to your lure, they'll come right up. They'll, I don't know how they see it up that far, but they do. <laughs> um, and you can be spotted on the sounder coming up to your lure. So it's the same scenario with these boys. So. Um, if they're down 20 or 30 metres, you either can vertical jig them or you can just keep trolling. But most of the time, one of, the, one of them will come up and then a few of them will come up and hit your lures. So um, don't think they're always on the top. Okay. Any questions on that so far? How close to the fad are you talking about? Yeah. Well, okay, if you have the luxury of having the fad to yourself, I guess as close as I could. Right. Yeah. Um, as close as you can handle a fish around the fad or away from the fad. Um, because as they jump over the fat, it's going to get tangled up. Um, but you don't necessarily, I, I find most of the fish are, but my honey hole on a fad, if there's a bit of two knots of current, would be in this area here or in this area here, away from the fat a bit, if it's, if it's 
raging southerly current. Um, if there's no current, they, they will be down this way a bit further, and they'll be around, around the fad sort of thing. But they always sit up into the current, and they're always forward. And believe it or not, that, like those ropes, I try to find out what, what's on the fads. I try to check all the government sites. They don't really tell you. They just say it's a buoy tied to a rope with a 1.7 metre block on the end of it. <laughs> That's all they say. Um, but originally, when I spoke to fisheries uh, a few years ago, when they deployed these, um, they're supposed to be at about 20 metres down. There's a whole heap of crap hanging off the, off the rope down a fair bit. Um, and if that rope's um, on an angle in the current, most of the fish are going to be probably 20 or 30 metres up into the front of the buoy, up current. Okay? So they're not going to be back at the buoy. The buoy itself will hold a few fish, but most of this is going to hold most of the fish down here. Um, actually, talking about that, we'll just quickly go through these fad marks, if you want. So... How long is that right? Ah, oh, it's a good question too. I can't find that out either, and I'd like to know because I could know how far back it is from the yeah. from the bottom. But um, I would dare think in, in that sort of 65, 70 metre line, it would have to be at least 120 metres or 150 metres. So it's sort of about 35 to 40 degrees. That's right, mate. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. It depends on the current, of course. Yeah. And when the current's raging, like, it looks like this, this, it's swimming in the current. You know, yeah. at that point, it's probably at its longest. So. Um, it might be 200 metres, I'm not really sure. But I dare think it wouldn't be too long unless these weights on the, on the rope. Because um, if there's no current, you're going to have this big lot of rope yeah. near the top, yeah. you know? So I, I'd say they've weighted the line as well. It's probably the scenario. But when there's a lot of current, it'll pull that buoy all the way back down the current. So that's where you might see the 200 metres stretched out. And that might be the reason why you get a lot of fish sort of 60 metres up in front of it when there's a current running. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, How long do they stay in the The dolphin fish? Yeah, all oh, oh, they start now and they obviously grow bigger, bigger. Um, yeah, April. But the best months are uh, December, January and February. Yeah. But the ones you get um, February, March are, are really big ones. Yeah, but they get such a hammering. <laughs> um, they... No, that's right. Yeah, they sort of dissipate a bit. But they're out there still. You just got to try and find them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah the bigger size later on. Mm. Yeah. Seven centimetres a week. <laughs> Sorry, can I just quickly yes. ask? Um, yeah. Trolling, do you find they don't shut down as quickly as, say, the real cars that dissipate? Um, that's a good question, too. They will... Uh, um, if there's not too many boats in the area... Uh, as I was saying before, um, you'll get them trolling at 100% and it's the easiest way to catch them. Um, but when there's a few boats around and you're trolling, yeah, they'll, they'll switch off, but then you change, change to deep stuff. So if you had it to yourself, yep. um, say you catch one or two on a stick bait, they say yep. to shut down, if I switch to trolling, yep. I have better luck? Yeah, you probably will yep. because they might have moved out a little bit and you're covering more ground. And you'll get like stray, stray ones because I don't know if you guys have seen it too when you're out around the fads and um, there'll be, you know, there's fish all there. And then you look over, you see one jump, you know, 300 metres away out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> they're the ones you get trolling because they're just out there feeding on their own, you know, whatever they do. Or well, they've got a big shark up their backside. Yeah. Honestly. And like they're a really inquisitive fish as well. Like the best teaser really is that, it's your boat. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So they mm. hear the noise, they see the commotion, they come up to have a look and see what's going on, and then see your smorgasbord out the back, mm. and that's what they hone in on after that, yeah. Mm. Um, so I printed these fads off, so this is pretty all, all the fads, there's both pages on that side too, um, from here to Morton Island, from Lulabar, say. Um, I think we got double oil, oh, there's double oil on there too, Fraser. Um, now, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have, we have a fad on the 24 Fathom Reef, which is out the front here off sort of Q1. Here we get spanner crabs in 50 metres, or 52 metres deep. Um, that's the local fad. That one, um, I've caught lots of marlin there, but never caught many dolphin fish there yet. So it seems to be, uh, I'm not saying it's in, not, not, in, uh, not far enough out, but they just don't seem to go around it for some reason, not yeah. yet. Has anyone ever caught a dolphin fish at the fat at the front here at all? I don't know, but anyway. Is that the first time on the list you Yeah, uh, I think it is. Yeah, it is, correct, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 
Yep. So it's about uh, 10 or 12k from the seaway actually. Um, off Q1 in about 50 metres deep. Well, it says 46, but it's actually, I think it's about 50 nearly. Um, but they will be there at times because I know they get a, get little ones around the um, wave rider boy off, off SeaWorld there in like 20 metres deep. So I just don't know why they aren't there, but there's, they always get marlin around there, especially in January. Um, FAD 2, so FAD 2's on the, this is in no orders, this is the order they put it in. Fad 2 is on the 50s, um, it's pretty well east of the seaway, um, straight at the front. So the seaway is on 2756, this is 2755, 790, so it's near the same latitude as the seaway. Um, and it's on, it's actually where um, we get a few kingies out in this area and pearlies. So yes, yeah, straight from the seaway, okay. Um, it's actually, I think I could explain this before too, but the latitudes on the, uh, if this is the seaway here and Tweed Head's down there, the latitudes don't go that way, they go that way. Okay, they go on the southeast angle. So when you're on 27.55 or 56 um, and you're out there, you're actually down off about, um, I don't know, probably Q1 or, or further south, even though you're on that same latitude as the seaway. So you're fairway south. Um, FAD 3, that's really popular one. That's the 36 is northeast of the seaway. Um, that one's probably one of the most hammered fads and it's also one of the most productive fads. Um, it's a really good one. It's so it's about 20 k's from the seaway. Uh, fad 11, um, that one I haven't fished much yet. Uh, that's down um, south, like down on sort of Burley Heads, I guess. And again, Burley Heads is on 28.05, but on 28.03, out that far, you're probably at Burley or maybe even uh, Crumbin. So I haven't fished that one. Has anyone ever fished that one at all? Down off Burley, 36s? Yeah, Greg? Oh, is that right, mate? Okay, so Greg got one just the other way. You know what's about? Is it a metre, Greg? Yeah, just over a metre. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. I approached it, there was a big bust up all around the back. Yeah, right. But as soon as I got anywhere near it, they took off. Okay. Up and down half a dozen yeah. times and eventually grab that one. Right, yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, so I would have probably told me that later, Greg, in confidentiality, but that's all right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows them, right? <laughs> no, no, they'll be there, don't worry, they'll be building up bigger and bigger. Um, they're just they're just like they come from up north, right, guys, and they just keep stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. And the baits there, they'll keep stacking up even more. They don't need to go, that's it's their home for a little while. Um, okay, FAD twelve and twelve B and twelve C. So these guys are three fads straight at the front here. You all know about those. Has anyone ever been to there? Yeah. Okay, it's a great spot. Um, and the best thing is you've got three fads that can just do like the big trolling around the whole circle. And you're sort of trolling in the air. It might be uh, about sort of two k's by two k's. So it's a big paddock and, and the three hold fish pretty good. Um, that's a great area to fish probably around mid-December to sort of end of January. Um, then FAD 13, so that one's um, off jumping pin pretty well, straight up front of jumping pin bar, and uh, that's on the 50s. So that one there's probably where you're going to get consistently better fish than I do in that spot. Um, you fish there average, in a couple of weeks' time, they'll be they're normally about a metre long. And um, it doesn't get hammered as much because it's just another 20 k's out past the 36s. So unless your boat's sort of five metres, um, you know, unless you know what you're doing, it's a little bit far. Um, FAD 14 um, is the one that fishes probably the best actually <laughs> on the 36. So that one's north of Jumping Pin Bar. Not many guys go that far up because it's about a 36k run. How far is it from the ceiling? Um, 18, yeah, 18 miles from the seaway. So it's about nearly it's, yeah, 35, 40k. So it's like going to the 50s, but you're on the 36s. So it's a long run up. The fish there last year were consistently much bigger than the other fads. Um, so when the, there's a, has anyone fished the um, wave rider boy off, off um, Point Lookout? Okay, you know there's, well, there's always dolphin fish there, mate. Nearly all year, actually. Um, so the current comes hooking down from up north and it comes hooking around Point Lookout and then it sort of shoots a bit southwest off Point Lookout 
sort of comes back in a bit, and it hits uh, it hits the wave rider buoy first off by look out, and then it hits this fad. So all the fish tend to be really packed in on this fad, and then from then on the current sort of is not as strong, and they they dissipate amongst all the other fads. But this is like the holding fad, um, the most northern holding fad for our waterways up here, uh, where the current runs a bit harder and the fishing is a lot better. So if you've got the opportunity to go north a bit and go for a bit of a run one day to get away from the other boats, you'll be lucky to see in prime time three boats there, where well, you might see. Get busy. Does, it does yeah, get busy, yeah. Yeah. does it? Yeah. Okay, I've never seen more than three there, but I am normally go during the week. On, on the weekend probably, I guess. Okay. Yeah, okay. So on a Tuesday, there'll be no one there. Tuesday, like I don't see, I think I've only during the week. And I think I three is the most boats I've ever had there. But it's a great spot, as you probably know. Um, then uh, the next one down is um, Point Lookout, which is um, obviously the further north you go, the better it gets, guys. Uh, then you go further up, further north. So we keep going all the way around. I want to teach you something here. Um, go to the last page and then you'll see there's three more fads which are um, or four fads which are um, three fads sorry which is fad number number um, 1A, 1B and 1C so they're, they'll put out last year and I reckon this year they're going to go crazy for big fish um, these guys are, are situated they're a, they're called subsurface um, fad they're 25 metres below the surface and that's as far up as they come. And they're in about 300 metres of water. And they've got lots of trinkets hanging off it. So when you do see a diagram of this fad, it actually has lots of that stuff. It has, um, I think, six massive buoys positioned about 10 metres apart up towards its top buoy, which is still 25 metres below. So it has lots of stuff on it, and uh, which will hold big dolphin fish. Um, and uh, I know last year, the guys that knew where it was from the game club they got a lot of wahoo there as well, big wahoo. Um, and also, uh, I think, striped marlin as well. So it's a bit of a run, though. Most of these are 50 k's from the seaway. So you either want a good day with a five-metre boat and lots of fuel, or you get a bigger boat. It's as simple as that. <laughs> um, has anyone fished out like deep water, like for blue marlin and stuff like that? No. Has anyone had a boat over five metres? Okay, half of you do. So if you're confident in your boat, know your boat and you know the sea and the weather um, and you want to do something different, I'd be... Because there definitely won't be 10 boats out there, I can assure you that. Okay. And those guys are positioned, um, looking on this chart here, within a mile of each other. And the, when I read about this, these ones, as in the reading about last year, they said that um, they're highly visible on the sound over so hold over whole bait in that depth as well so you'll see the bait and stuff like that yeah but i haven't fished them yet so i can't tell you how good they are but i know from our customers they're good a lot of wahoo but that's mainly probably going to be anywhere from or actually now the bigger fish always start out wide and they come in closer okay as the water warms up so the water out there now is probably around 25 degrees or 26 out at that depth or should be at least 24 and a half 25 um, we were at deep water about three, four weeks ago, and we had 24.5 back then, so it would be probably 25, 26 now. Then as that uh, current comes down more and gets stronger, it pushes in, pushes in into a, a big bay here, and, and the fish come in closer with it. Pelagic, that is. Um, any questions on the fads at all, guys? So you got all the marks, you get no excuses, okay? <laughs> But in saying that, um, it's not the be all and end all to, to fish. Um, a lot of our customers get their fish just trawling out on the paddock, so we call it the paddock. So trawling the paddock means trawling along the 50 metre line at the top of a reef, trawling on the, the sort of 36 fathoms from, you go right up to, north, to that northern fad and come all the way down to Tweed for a big day out if you want to do one way with the current. Um, and probably would get quite a few fish along that run. And when you find something, you go back and hound it, you know, and then go down a bit further. And look look for debris. Sorry, mate. Well, when you're trying the, the paddock, mm. are you just looking for current lines? Looking for or? current lines, looking for structure. I'm trolling over the top of structure. I find that you get more fish, obviously, out of the reef than you do out over the sand. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, unless you've got a good current line out of the sand. Yeah. 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 And when, well, you're out, when you're out there over the reef, would you mm -hmm. use bigger skirts rather than those? Um, no, not necessarily. Not this time of the year, but um, well, I might put a little one on the, the uh, shoddy, but most of them would be that six inch size. Yeah. yeah. But when you go out to the wider grounds, um, those say those submerged ones, um, I'd be trolling probably 24 kilo there. Yeah. And, um, and skirts probably eight to 10 inch. Yeah. Cause you're gonna get blue marlin, striped marlin, 30 kilo woes. Yeah, and yeah I, bigger I, class of fish yeah, out there. Class fish, yeah. Yeah. Has anyone been like north um, trolling the last two months? Sort of like I've been mean, north of sort of Gladstone there at all? No, no one's been up there. So I was up there about a month ago, six weeks ago. We did from uh, Early Beach up to Cairns over eight days. And we bottom fished obviously, but we trawled along the outside edge of the reef every afternoon for two hours. The amount of wahoo, like I've, never, I've been up there quite a few times, I've never seen so many wahoo. So I'm hoping they'll get down here. Uh, and the big wahoo, like average size, 20 kilos. Um, we got a lot of, in 30 plus, you know, and we lost lots of big ones, got bitten off, whatever. Uh, and we're trolling sometimes heavy, like 60 kilo tackle, but sometimes we're trolling lighter stuff. But um, those who are who uh, will probably get down here around January, I think, or late December. So uh, with them, we didn't get any dolphin fish, believe it or not. We didn't get any dolphin fish up there, I couldn't believe it. Or maybe they've already gone past, I don't know. Um, and they're somewhere off Gladstone or somewhere. But um, for the wahoo season, yeah, when you're out in that deeper water, so we get back to, you need 24 kilo most times to get a, a 30 plus kilo wahoo in and it's quite often 30 plus kilo caught off the Gold Coast here and predominantly out in that sort of 300 metre to two to four five hundred metre line. The Spanish mackerel don't go past 50 metres, they do up north but they don't out here, they, it's sort of like they hit a wall and don't go past it but wahoo go anywhere. Okay. So do dolphin fish. Um, okay, so any questions on the fads at all? All good? Fantastic. Anything you want to add to that? No, that's no. about it. That's about it, cool. Okay, um, so get back to the trolling. So skirts. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. What's, is there any etiquette around the fads? Okay, yeah, so guys, etiquette on the fads, very good question. I put it out there once and it was just my head. It was my head, yeah. 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 So, guys, um, and, and I've seen some guys say some stupid things at fads to each other, but it's the, there is an etiquette thing actually in the fisheries thing if you read um, about the fad fishing on the deploy the fads and what the etiquette is. And they say that um, it's like a leapfrog situation. So um, if someone new comes along and you've gone past the fad in the run, let him do his run, then you go behind him, that sort of thing. Um, if there's a Spiro pulls up and you're trolling around the fad, he can't jump in the water until you guys have cleared the fad. He can't just jump in front of you and expect you to stop, you know. Um, if there's a spear out of water and you're coming along with the lures, you have to wait for him to swim away. <laughs> or you jump in the back of the boat. Um, and then you can put your lures out and, and fish it or your baits, whatever. Uh, as you can see, there's like, I don't know many fads off the Gold Coast, 13. The trouble with the Gold Coast is we get a lot of boats from Brisbane come down. Um, and as I say to Stuart, more than half the boats out here, I don't know the people very well because they're from Brisbane, they're not our regulars. Uh, so um, we just have to put over there, we can't think about it. We can go fish their waters, I guess. But uh, it's very easy for a little boat to come down the Gold Coast because to go from uh, up there out then through the South Passage, it's a fairly big uh, logistic nightmare for a little boat. Um, so the Gold Coast is really easy. They can just tow their tinny down and go out to, to, to these 36,000 fads. That's very easy. Um, so we have to contend with that. Um, but early is best. It gets daylight now. We had another couple of weeks time at 3.30 in the morning, so get up really before, early. <laughs> before, before, yeah, before if you can. Yeah. And there's no whales to worry about now, so you're pretty safe about driving in the dark. Uh, just be careful though, of course. Spot lock? Spot lock, yes. Now, it doesn't say anything about that in the rules. <laughs> um, the thing um, I've noticed, like, I've got a couple of mates that got those, well, they got big boats and they got the, lock, the helm lock things on their boats. And when the current's really raging at two knots, it's very hard to spot lock. 
and the boat's fighting and, and when you throw your, your lure up or your bait up, it's already gone past you. It's actually a lot easier than fish drifting with the current than actually to work with then the fish against it, does that make sense? Um, and don't get much time, so you cast your bait out or your lure out and, and uh, it's already coming down with the current. But when I'm drifting, I can cast it out and it stays with me the whole way as I'm going along. So I get a longer drift. So I'd say not spot lock, unless you've got a day that's no current and not many boats around, they're going to go mad at you. But there's no saying you can't do it. You're allowed to do it, of course you are. Um, but yeah. Fads are a hard thing to be politically correct about <laughs> when it comes to fishing them, but they, they hold the fish. Um, my suggestion would be try and get sicky during the week or the weather's good, because that's a better time to get out there, yeah. which we normally can't do. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took a bit of bamboo out. <laughs> and that's why, and this is why, like, I know Gav or C-Probe and a lot of those other guys deploy their own fads, you know, and they generally sink, they used to have them on the surface, and they still do sometimes, but a lot of time they're now similar to the submergible ones, submerged ones, um, but in close to like 50 fathoms, whatever. So they're 25 metres down, so ships don't run over them, I guess. Um, and they're obviously on reefs, so trawlers don't drag them up. But they, they, only they know where they are. And there's a few guys that have found them, the submerged ones, in the last couple of years, and and absolutely smashed it, you know, because they've just been trolled around and seen this thing on the sounder and not realised what it was and pulled a lot of dolphin fish off it. And they, obviously that's what they are. Um, but that's their livelihood. So, you know, you could maybe go and follow them out one day and see where they go to. When you see them catch a heap of dolphin fish on the, on the TV or whatever, you obviously get them from somewhere because you don't see them around the fads that you go to. So they've got their own fad, you know. It's nature. illegal. It becomes a transportation hazard. Transport hazard or something. Yeah, so as far as I know, it's illegal. Maybe they didn't put them out. Maybe they just <coughs> landed there from somewhere. Maybe come the come down from the up north where someone's yeah, bads ship. deployed them. Yeah. They fell off a ship, maybe, yeah, that's right. Container, I don't know. But, um, yeah. <laughs> the best fad by far is to find that log float, and that's the best fad. And you got it to yourself, so yeah. Um, but when you find the fish, you'll catch them. How long do you spend there before you start getting everything? Yeah, so that's why we switch to different type of fishing. So, um, like we do a few laps, and they're not really happening. And there's not many boats around. I do, as the gentleman said, I'll, I'll either throw lures or throw baits. Um, if I've got live, live baits, are very easy to catch dolphin fish. So I just love it. So live baits is probably the, the easiest way other, like you're going to get more fish trolling because you're covering more ground but if you concentrate on the area live baits by far the best way to catch them and uh you just use yakas or slimies and hook them on and throw them out and they just get smashed no sinker um but um if if there's not much current and there's not many boats around um because it's hard to cast uh, stick baits and lures when there's boats zooming all around there. It's very, really, really hard to do. That's why my mate's vertical jig. Um, so it's your choice what you can do there. But if you haven't got many boats around um, and you haven't got live bait or you haven't got any bait, I'd switch to definitely soft plastics. We've caught lots of soft plastics, uh, like this sort of thing. I'll pass these around too. It's like a seven inch sort of gulp shad or, or whatever. Um, actually, my mine's rigged up from last year there that sort of stuff, and running around about a, not a really big jig head on there, so sort of anything from about an eighth to about maybe half ounce. So you want it sort of just semi-surface. Yeah, yeah, you want it to kind of waft down, look really natural. Mm. You don't want it to just plummet past all the And they do hit on the fall too. Yeah. Yep. Um, this year I'm going to try. I'm going to try things even like that, like just a big prawn. I reckon they, like they have to feed on prawns on the ocean. I dare think. Um, I reckon that'll work too. You know. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's the sort of like that's yeah, the small, like a small. The, that's the lightest jig head, and that's probably sort of like an average size jig head you'd run in your plastics. Just before we get to soft plastics, anyone else got any questions on trolling skirts? Can I just tell you one quick thing, guys? 
Um, if you're going to rig up your own skirts, um, I see a lot of guys, they pull the hooks right up there like that, okay? So don't do that. Um, it's much better if you've got the hook hanging out below the skirt, like even right below the skirt. So at least in that position. Okay. So if you rig up your own lures, if you've got to space it with um, beads or, you know, luno beads, whatever, um, down to nearly the eye in the hook like that. And you're activating for one hook? One hook, 100%. I just, because you've got, you know, generally mates of the boat that maybe don't, don't fish much, and it's just a bit, when they're, because the dolphin fish are so crazy and erratic, um, it's just dangerous, mate. The okay. second hook's flying around, a lot of guys get impaled in the top of their handy or in their thumb area. Um, yeah, I'd suggest one hook. And the hook up rate, I don't think it's any different. Like I, I don't think we ever lose a fish. Like lose a, a hook come out or a, um, lose a bite, you know? The dolphin fish are just come and whack it. Yeah. They've got a very hard mouth, so when the hook's in, it's in. It's not soft. Yeah. What do you use to get them in the boat? Like a net or...? No, it's like gaff them. So um, if they're those little ones, I just do a, a, a loop on the thing and lift them in. Uh, but I think over about 750, 800 or gaff. Um, I don't use a long gaff, I use um, a short gaff. Oh, so yeah. Something like that size. Um, and not too big on the head, not a real big head. Because they're only very thin fish. So it's... Yeah, usually around the shoulder. So around the head. You can get it in the head, because they've got a big head, especially the males. So the females are the little head ones, and the males are the big steep head one. Um, and the head's very hard, but make sure you gaff sharp. And, but, but yeah, like a rock, exactly right, matey. Um, but you have to really hang on because they've got a long tail and that's why they're so fast and so aggressive. So if you go on the head, I grab the leader as I always do. At the same time as I'm pulling the leader, I'm pulling this into the head and straight in the boat into wherever I want to put it into and close the lid. <laughs> yeah. And so make sure you look sharp. Um, and if you do get one that takes off, and that's what happened to those guys that day, I couldn't believe it. My friends, uh, my Asian friends that day, when we had the, the feast on that bit of bamboo, I think they lost two gas. And I saw one going through the water like this. <laughs> and I just couldn't stop laughing at it. It was so funny. They, they were such cool guys. Anyhow, you wouldn't believe it. The, the fish swam back, and the guy grabbed the gaff and put, lifted the boat. <laughs> Still. It'll still attach to the line though, but yeah. <laughs> the gaff come back. That would act like a bamboo. It would probably, yeah. 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 Maybe his mates are following it. But um, yeah, so just not too big gaff, not too wide a gaff, sharp, and pull in, headshot, straight into wherever you're going to put it. Do you need to bleed them at all? No, you don't need to, but all fish are better if you bleed it, okay? Yep. Yeah, so after, um, settle. after you settle down. Not too much, so like if it's dead, it won't bleed. It doesn't work as good. Yep. Uh, you know, if you. It's got to be semi-alive, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, you need so to, to speak. pump a bit of blood out hey, yeah, like yeah. after you cut the throat or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, they're fairly white meat flesh. They're not a red meat uh, pelagic. Yep. Yep. Doug, will you yep. extend the, your wire to the lure No, well? I don't. And, and I know you're probably talking about wahoo. Um, I take the chance. Too many. Too many, I know. We, we sell lures. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, how do I say this you will get probably less bites if you extend the wire I don't know what it does but obviously the lure doesn't maybe do it swimming as nicely or whatever it might be it's stiff rig sort of so to speak right um, but when we're trolling say mackerel lures we, we run wire past the head right um, so different scenario but um, and when I'm trolling for Wahoo, I run wire, and that's what I run, I don't run any mono at all. I'm like, and short, short rig. So if you're in an area where you know there's going to be maybe a few Wahoo and stuff like that, and you're trolling uh, these lures, especially the, the high speed type ones, for, and you get, as I've, as I've caught before, dolphin fish, and doing that, as I said, we caught them on chasing Wahoo, and yeah, it was only wire. But it might have been, they were thick that day, I don't know. But, you're going to get more bites without the um, without the wire in front of the head. Yeah, it's a chance you're going to take. If you get your favourite lure and you're scared of losing it, and you can't get any more. I'd probably put wire in front of it as security. Yeah, just run wire, short wire trace. You only need a bite trace. Okay, in case you get a wire or whatever. 
why have a long snout? So if you want 20 kilos, your snout's probably that long. And you'll need to go from that side of the snout around to the other side. If you, if you hook him over there and he's, he's maybe swimming away from the line, you'll need you know, that long. So if your trace is about 50 centimetres, you're pretty safe. Uh, then crimp, uh, do you know that type of thing? You just have a, a crimp loop on the top of the wire yeah. um, with a bit of shape on there if you want to do a bit of shaping tube and then your snap swivel goes through it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so so you've got a snap lock on your rod lock. Yeah, so a size snap you should be using is like a four or five um, on 15 kilo. Oh, yeah, like, like a eight foot, um, three and a half metre off my snap swivel. Yeah, that's right. That goes down to the ball bearing at the back of the skirt. Uh, no, the, uh, on your leader, you have your uh, snap swivel crimped onto the leader, and at the top of the of the lure is just a loop. Yeah, still yeah. with a bit of trace so on it. That, yeah, that's the reason why today I want you guys to learn about rigging your own lures. That's why we purposely didn't rig your lures this time. Last year we did, but this time we didn't. <laughs> so we gave you something else instead of the hook rig. Um, but it's because you need to learn how to do it when you're out there fishing, because you can't come back once you. You know, something goes wrong, you, you should know how to do it out there on the, on the spot. Yeah. Yep. Just have my snap in here. Snap in. Yep, and then the rod looks exactly like two has got rigged up yep. there. And on your, your trace, your wire trace, I'll use mono. And most of the hook rigs will pass this around as well. I pass, that's the scenario there. Um, so the hook rig um, is wire. And the gentleman's asked before about wire and hook rig. It's always wire and hook rig because you just can't take the chance of not having wire with this wire hook around. Because I was bite straight off, but bite off as it is. Um, and then you have um, mono leader attached to the hook rig, which goes through the lure and it's crimped on. And it's normally only short, like a metre long, if that. Uh, and then a loop at the end with a bit of tube on it. And then the end of your rod, your, your wind on leader or your leader, 60 to 80 pound, whatever, um, you crimp or tie a snap to the end of that snap swivel. And then that hooks through the loop. And you can just, as I said before, if you get a um, dolphin shot and you throw it in the esky, you unhook the snap, get rid of that lure and hook another one on again through the loop. But if you were going for wahoo, you yep. get rid of that mono? I get rid of the, uh, get rid of the mono section and all my lures are rigged with wire on. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I have a whole lot of um, rigged wire. I find having lures. snaps that were so close to the, the pen and the lure yep. No, not at all. Not at all. No. No, not at all. Um, you know, if I'm trolling baits for Spanish mackerel and, that and whatever, um, I actually all bright the wire to the, to the line, so there's nothing there, just the bait swimming. And my hookup rate's much, much, much better than having a stack sort of in front of my wire. Yeah. The big thing is these are on the top. They're not actually swimming. Yeah. So, like, there's no drag or disturbance under the water. Right. Yeah, the mm. nine times out of ten, your clip's going to be out the water anyway. Yeah, yeah the thing, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the commotion on the surface and the colour that's going to get the fish going here, not what not that snap swivel in the front. So you don't need to worry about it. And wahoo, they don't care. They just, I don't know if you have a snap that big in the front, they just eat it. Yeah, or they they'll eat the snap, snap too. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I've suggested you use shiny snaps, not the black ones going around. So that snap is not actually creating any disturbance of the water that's going to distract the fish. No, if anything, it might attract the fish. Yeah. To the, they'll, you know, it's like us going to a smaller sport and there's a little prawn and a big prawn in the bowl. The little prawn might be looking at it, but <laughs> you're going to eat the big one, you know. So it may be even a teaser to the, to the thing. Actually, in America, um, and, and like no one does it here, but in America, a lot of people who troll these skirts for dolphin fish in particular, um, they'd run a little tiny bird about a metre up or two metres up in front of their lure. And the bird, little tiny birds, doing this on the surface, making a commotion, and then they, obviously they come in and grab the bigger lure. Um, I'm gonna try it this year, I haven't tried it. I keep meaning to try it every year, but I can't, don't try it. But um, it's really popular in the States. So the snap, I believe, is, is probably a tease, if anything. Yeah, for, for dolphin fishing and that. I don't know, you could try things. Um, any questions on the skirts at all, guys? So, colours, um, I can say for colours. So, traditionally, when we're trolling uh, for marlin, we're trolling the dark colours in close because it's more visual as a silhouette in the, in the white froth on our boat. How many people here have got jet skis? Fish not skis. Okay, a couple of you have. So, you guys got a boat as well, or mainly just a ski? Ski only? Both. Both. How about you, matey? Both, yep. Yeah. And you, sir? Both, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. 
So if you're in a, on a jet ski, they have a lot more, you have a lot more commotion behind the boat, a lot more white, uh, behind the ski, sorry, a lot more frost. So you need really dark colour lures in close. Um, but for dolphin fish, um, it's not necessary to have, because your lure's a bit further back, it's a little bit cleaner. Um, you don't need to worry about that too much. So you can use purple lures, they love purple lures, don't get me wrong. But generally speaking, it's greens, greens and greens, they love green. Okay. Uh, whites are really good too. Uh, pinks are really good. Bright colours. Um, natural colours, not as good as bright colours, I find. Everyone's used to his own. Um, but you can get, you know, you can get lures cheap. Like these are pre-rigged. I think the rigs, we don't get any people, you have people catch mail on these things. They're like 16 bucks or something, rigged, you know, skirt lure. Um, and they work. I think I told the story. One time we had a guy, a customer of ours, I rigged up a whole heap of um, coolers at one time, like 50, 60 bucks a pot rigged. And he bought a couple of those just, just to have spare. And then he came in and he's got his first mile and he's happy as Larry. And I'm trying to work which colour, but it was because I was going next weekend. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, oh, which one to get on? I'm showing the lures. Is that one, that one? And he's like, mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, that's it over there. And it's one of these bloody things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chuck that on. <laughs> his first mile on it. And he's like, happy as Larry. And I'm like, oh, crap. OK. So they do work. And he's not the first person to do that in the shop, I don't think. No. But uh, anyhow, so get back to the colours. Uh, yeah, pinks, greens. Um, Eagle's a real good colour for dolphin fish. I love that sort of colour there. Um, it's available in Pakula and a few other brands. Um, we have a fair range of Pakulas out at the moment, but I've just been around Pete's. We've got about another 300 lures coming in next week, which will give you guys a bit to choose from. Um, but the reason I like the ones you've got your bag is I actually troll those at six knots and I troll them up to 10 knots or 12 knots. They hang in there, they're really heavy. Um, they still make a motion at slow speed, but you can actually give it a bit of, bit of speed and they, uh, they hang in and they don't catapult out of the water or whatever. Extremely good. Um, yeah, so anyhow. But keep in that sort of, yeah, 100 mil to 150 mil in the skirt length. And, um, and if you're fishing out wider of 100 metres, um, you can go up to 250 mil in the skirt, 10 inch. But you need to upgrade your line. That's about it on trolling. I think. Yep. Okay. Um, no questions on trolling at all, guys? You got it all? Down pat? Okay. Um, casting, Stuart, this is where you really come in, mate. I like casting. <laughs> oh, bit. Trolling's good, it's very effective. You cover a lot of ground, you find a lot of fish, mm. but um, I'm a bit more active. I want to um, get in there, figure out what they're eating, try to match that hatch, match what they're eating, and um, catch a lot more fish that way. Um, I like casting stick baits a lot and plastics. Plastics, same ones as what we handed around, really effective. I like that bigger profile. Um, unless they're smaller fish and they're eating real small bait. And I always rig it on a really light jig head, as we said before. You want it to kind of waft down. If it's too heavy, it's going to sink straight past them and they're not going to, they're going to blink and then miss it. You want it to kind of waft down through the water column and work it back mid water. Does still work in the Fast yeah, yeah, you kind does. of always just got to yeah. throw up, 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 up current a bit. On an angle, yeah, and bring it back down, Greg. Yeah. 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 But um, and that's where your light line comes into play as well, Greg, because it sinks a bit quicker. I'll just pass these around. Yeah, uh, so these are sort of another, like the smallest to the biggest size yeah. I've cast around here. Yeah, so these are like another couple of good stick baits. So same type of thing. Um, when the current's really roaring, it's good to use a stick bait. It does sink a little okay. bit quicker, and you can get a bit better cast up current. Guys, don't get too close to fad and just do like a 10 metre cast. You want to be like 40 metres away at least. Yeah. And cast, uh, even not even at it, like even be 80 metres from the fad and casting 30 metres away from the fad at the furthest of your cast, 50 metres away, say. Yeah. Um, and they'll come out from the fad and smash it away from everyone else. Um, the That's sort of like the smallest to about the biggest size that we use. The um, little Rapala one going around, so these are all 30% off too, but about, they come back to about 28 bucks or something. They're expensive, but they're really good quality and really good lures. They're weighted, so they're 40 grams or 42 grams. So even on 30 pound braid, you should be able to cast them 60 meters easy on, on anything like these sort of rods. Um, and 
you can let them sink because they sink quite quick or you can work it straight away on the surface. Um, we do everything from fast winding to lifting it up and let it fall, just like we're losing a plastic nearly. Yeah. And, uh, and also just um, this twitching stop, twitching stop. A lot of different actions. Um, they don't last very long until they get hit. And you'll see, if you've got polarised on, you'll see the fish coming out at it. Um, it's, you've got to pause or you keep winding. It's, you've got to work out how they're feeding, as you were saying. Yeah. What, what, they want to feed, yeah. what size lure they want to feed on. The big thing um, is when you're casting, as Dougie said, you don't want to do like a little cast. You want to cover like this school of fish and these ones. You don't just want to target this area. So if you, these fish might not be feeding at the time, but these ones will. So you want to be over here and you want to fish that whole area. Or yeah. Yeah, the yeah. If I was say the tide's running there, I'd probably start my boat about here. I'm running over here, sorry. And my first cast would be up in that angle there. And by the time I get to about here, my line would be coming through this area here with the drift. You know, so you're starting 100 metres up and probably uh, 80 metres out from the bad to the east and casting past everything. But by the time you get it to work, it'll be starting to come in this area here, across here. And you might get a second cast in, but if you get a fish on, by the time you get it off, you're going to go back up again. And someone else will be doing the same. <laughs> and then you get styles that swim as well, Stuart, right? Yeah. Yeah, like sinking bib minnows have been really good. They're a bit more basic to use. You can, because they're sinking, they still cast a long way. But um, yeah, they don't require the action like a normal stick bait would. So they do a lot of the swimming themselves and you've just got to medium wind it. You still can twitch and pause it, but um, does 99% of the action for you. Yeah. Some of these lures are expensive, but the Jap some are Japanese too, but they just work. And at the end of the day, there's no good throwing out a crappy one, although there is one that's really good that is um, cheaper. Um, it's a one from Samaki. It's like the ones going around now. Um, it's 40 grams, I think. They are, yeah, they're 40, 40 grams, grams and about the same size. And they're like 10 bucks. Yeah, they're cheap. <laughs> and they yeah. look. Okay. And they've so got as good a fish. No, the vibes. vibes are good too, mate. Yeah. Um, so soft vibes are excellent on, on them. Um, the bigger ones like 100 to 125 mil. Um, Cause you've got to wait to get it down yeah. a little bit. Uh, same deal like we work in the lures, but hop, bring it up and hop that pull back down. Sort of hop it mid water, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And if they're down deep, mate, um, you, if you've got the bigger size, like the 150s that are around two ounces, 50 grams or 56, you can actually get up a fair bit and then work that deep school and, and vibe it through the school. It's like your bass fishing now, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah, similar to like micro jigging, but you're just vibing instead. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And when you are vibing, don't go erratic. Just really slow lift. That's all you need. You don't need to go fast. Yeah, you just feel a vibe, bro. Yeah. Um, so... There's a heap of other type ones that have come out since last year that we haven't tried yet, so I can't tell you about them, but they look really good. Welcome to have a look when you get a chance. Um, but that's the sort of style we're casting, and we've got a lot of guys that cast fads. Does anyone here cast fads at all? And you do all right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's right, yeah. And using sort of heavy lures like those, mate, or just normal? I use a 25 gram SWB. Yep, cool, yep. So, I think 40 is good for like the wind factor. Yeah, 40 is good for yeah. current wind factor, that's right. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so. Uh, I think it's probably not just to say about those. That's not much. about it. Yeah. That's about it. Just getting back to um, the soft plastics, too, mm -hmm. I meant to say before, if you're using gulp, don't worry about it, but um, I'm an S factor freak, and they definitely do work better on dolphin fish with S factor on them. Yeah. I think they've got good smell and um, they'll hone in on it. So, um, okay, jigging. Any questions on casting at all, guys? All good? Okay. Uh, could I ask, um, yes. how many fish would you expect to be able to, to catch on a stick bait before you know it's typically shut down? Because I find it, it's like one or two. No, 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 not at all. Um, if they're like the, they're the same as any other fish, they have their bite time and and based on the moon and all that sort of stuff. So if you can time it right and there's not too many boats around, um, you should have a session that you bag out in. We bagged out in like an hour. So they don't just wind up. No. 
No, no generally not. Because they're that ferocious. Yeah. You will get times when they do wise up a bit, but you can still tick them over. I think I find dolphin fish too. Like a lot of time we're fishing, we're getting a couple, they might go a little bit quiet, but then all of a sudden, I don't know, those other ones come in from somewhere yeah. and then get another light, another burst again, you know? But you can get that to yourself as well, sticking at it. I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can try, if there's not much current, you can try building up with pillies and cast a belly trail. Mm-hmm. You've got spot lock or something on your motor. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In full gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, but yeah. But don't, I wouldn't anchor. You can, you're definitely not allowed to tie yourself off to a fair, which I'd love to do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, sorry about that on TV here, but, <laughs> but it would be the ultimate, I would think. Um, but you're not allowed to do that, and I wouldn't dare anchor around a fad in case you got caught in the fad, because you're really stressed, you're going to get caught in the rope. Uh, so, um, yeah, you, you just got to reverse. You can't reverse in the current too, because then your boat starts going. When it's doing two knots, you better go around in circles, you know. It, the current gets one corner and flicks the boat around, it doesn't work. Yeah. So you just got to drift. Yeah. But allow yourself to go right up. Sometimes we've got 200 metres past the fad, and catch fish up there too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They're not always at the fad. A lot of times I see people go straight at the fad and they try and hit the fad with their lures or baits, or whatever. They're not there, they're further up that way, you know. Especially up current, if you've got a current. Up current. Up current. Go up 200 metres. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, go up here. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, getting back to jigging. Okay, so jigging. Um, slow pitch jigging, one of the greatest ways to catch fish ever. Um, there's a lot of different outfits. Um, the sweet outfit would be something like this fellow here. Oops, sorry. Oops. Yeah, this is like the Rolls Royce of yeah, micro jigging. Yeah, so it's a little 1500 Oshio um, with a P 2.5 rod, um, which is rated to about 40 to 50 pound braid, believe it or not. It looks like a bait caster. It's got balls on its balls. Um, and this is the type of thing, a slow pitch. So you drop in these jigs down. Let's pass a couple of these around while we're talking. Um, oh, actually, yeah, that's, that's about as big as I go. Type of thing's jig. And, so uh, there's yeah, a so couple of different shapes of jigs that are mm. coming around. So the longer, slender one's generally a bit quicker. And the shorter and the wider a jig, the slower you can work it. So that braid that went around earlier, folks, that's 30, 40 pounds. That's the sort of thing you'd have on this type of rig. And because it's so thin, um, even the current's ripping, it just goes straight down with 40 grams jig on it. It goes Is straight that a, down. A cast no, it's actually a, a jig reel. Yeah. You can't, like, I could, you know, if I had a peel down, I'd easily double cast it out. Yeah. Um, but it's not a bait cast. No. <laughs> this thing's uh, got more power than, say, I'll give you some idea. I think it's got. Uh, I think this has got 15. How are you there? Oh, this, I'd dig up to, I'd dig that fat out in 300 metres of this thing. Oops, sorry. Because it's going to hold 300 metres of line, but you're only, you're only digging down 60 or 80 yes. metres. How many grams? If I was fishing out in the deep water one, yeah. uh, probably 130. Yeah. Just, just to get down the current out there. Or windage, whatever it might be. But 80 to 130, this will jig up to uh, 260. You get one metre fish on that. You get two yeah. metre fish on this. <laughs> yeah. This is this thing's so strong. <laughs> you're just about, yeah. that's right. It's even a lock on the side. So when it's going hell for leather and you've got a fish on you run out of line, you just prop yourself against something with your foot and push the little button on the side here and it the drag doesn't go. Yeah, it's out. just a break. It just locks. Yeah. It's, yeah, they're just amazing reels. So. What's it Uh the reel on someone's about just under I 600 bucks, I think. Yeah, right they're around. around that 600 mark for the smaller size, and then they do up to a 40, yeah. 400, sorry. And um, yeah. it's a bigger 4, size. 4,000. sorry. Yeah. yeah, they do three sizes. And the, yeah, the combo's about grand, but it's one you buy and that's it forever. Yeah. But and would you get the bigger one for this type? Um, uh, I'd probably go the you, smaller one, to be honest. Yeah, if you can, there's a 2,000 size, which is yeah, really popular as well. Yeah, the middle size, yeah. But they're not due until this week sometime, yeah. hopefully tomorrow. Um, but the 2000 holds 500 metres of 50 pound braid. Holds a lot of braid. They're really thin braid. Yeah. Um, but they're just built for really big fish. And these little rods, like, 
Um, when you come downstairs, I'll give you a yank on mine if you don't have a go on mine. <laughs> they look like, like you'd use it for catching bass. Uh, you probably could, uh, but it's just ridiculously strong. Um, but So what we're doing these, we're getting back to the fishing side of things. We're jigging these 30, 40, 50, 80 gram jigs and we're dropping it down to the bottom and we've worked out where the fish are sitting here. I'll probably start up here and by the time my, my jig's underneath them, I should be um, in that area, vicinity. And it's just, it's just a slow lift. It's very, very easy. It's gentleman's jigging. The old jigging fast top jigging for the kings and that's not that style. That these guys, as soon as, as soon as it falls down and flutters, they'll just nail it straight away. It's just like a little bait fish falling away. And you'll see the, the um, some of these jigs that are going around at the moment, this, the finish on them is ridiculous. They look like you're going to eat them yourself. And um, of course they've got so many hooks, a twin assist, plus a treble at the back or another assist at the back. Um, the hookup rate is like 100% really, really good. The hardest part with the jigging is it's getting the jig out of the mouth of the fish. That's the hardest part. So you have it cut it off and you have a few extra jigs. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about using like the really light combos for it, it's more putting the action into the lure. It's not so much biting the fish or anything. Like they do an awesome actually, job at biting the fish, but it's more yeah. to get that action out of the lure. Yeah, that's when you get it on, yeah. that's the best part actually. But yeah. you gotta yeah, you gotta play around a little bit, but you don't need to do much, just lift a slow lift and just wind down. Yeah. Um, we've been using that, if you see Stu's little dokan ad, but <laughs> these are the dokans. And um, I think we're gonna try using dolphin fish as well. We've caught about 12 different species on these now. Yeah. Um, but this is the sort of thing I reckon the dollies would just smash as well, you know? Yeah, they're really popular, yeah. really easy to use. And they're cheap, they're like 15, 13 bucks. Or yeah, 15 they bucks. work if you just drop them down and put them in the rod holder. Mm -hmm. They're just a really good jig. I'm, I'm finding where the fish are. So if they're yeah. down, if you're on 65 metres and they're down 40, I'll drop it down 50, work it back up through them. Right, yeah. But you'll probably get nailed on the fall on the way down. How are you going with the cones? Um, yeah, so that's why you've got to allow yourself, you've got to work yeah. out how long it takes you to get on the drift. So I always do a blind drift, I'll do it every time. So if I'm going to drift or cast or anything, yeah. I'll tell the guys, get, get the gear ready, and I'll just quickly mark my plotter where I am, where I started, and you know it's only going to take. 40 seconds to get down to your depth, or a minute maybe, you know. So then I'd see how far I'd drifted in that minute. And there's no point starting up there if I've only drifted that far. Because the current's going to get me, the wind's going to get me. By the time I get down to here, my line will be way out there somewhere, yeah. unless I'm backing up. So in that scenario, I'd start right about here. And I know in 40, 50 seconds, I'm going to be right in the zone and hopefully pull one out. I oh, definitely back up. I'm definitely backing up if I don't get a hit straight away because I'm trying to get another go at it yeah. and drop back down again. Yeah, you want to um, be as vertical yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, so once once the line's more about that angle on the back, I'm backing up no matter what, what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want it to be straight down there. Yeah. Like Stuart said. Yeah. 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 And that's the other thing, like as Dougie said, you find where the fish are and you know they're down around 40 metres or whatever. Mm. That multicolour braid, 40 metres is four colours. That's so easy. it's nice and easy, so yeah. you count it down and you know where your lure is most of the time. There's always going to be a bit of play with a bit of um, angle in your line or anything like that, but you're pretty close to it. Yeah. Okay, any questions on that at all, folks? You can do, if they're not taking slow pitch jigs, then try, fa try fast. Use that longer one that's going around. That one's a fast one. You will still catch fish slow fall, but it's more of a fast jig, so you might work that a bit faster up through the through the through this fish here. Which I've seen on the, on the sound, as I said, they look like a bait's ball sometimes, but they're actually dolphin fish. And they might be, I don't know, eight, eight or ten metres thick. So you've got a fair way to work up through them. Um, okay. So that's probably better on the lure fishing. Any questions on the lure fishing if we go to baits? No? Okay, good. Okay, so baits. Um, pilchers are by far the best dead bait to use for, for the uh, dolphin fish, by far. The smell, pillies smell, they know the smell and they just come in on it. Um, I've got exhibit A here, pilchard. Oops. So um, if I was using that for dolphin fish, I'd probably cut it into half. Um, I may even cut it into three sections and use three sections, but I'll definitely cut it in half. And I'll just quickly rig up a, a rig here with some leader. 
Let me leave it floating around Stewie. Is it over here? Oh, it's too thick. That's 80 pounds. <laughs> Get off the rod. So sometimes, you asked them before, maybe they get a bit fussy. They do sometimes, especially on baits for some reason. Because um, baits work on obviously smell, not, not action. So you've got to get them enticed by presenting the bait right, not because there's no action to bait. Um, so I try and hide the hook in the bait as much as I can. I feel like mackerel fishing sort of thing. These hooks are very sticky. This means they're very sharp. I don't use two hook snell, I just use the one hook. And the reason being is, as I said before, it's too hard and too dangerous with two hooks when you get dolphin fish. <laughs> and I find one hook's enough. But they shape the line pretty quickly. So. Everyone has their own ways of tying their knots. As long as it works and doesn't slip, I'm happy. So I'll just put a little pilchard on here and pass it around. You can see how I do it. So the hook's just tied on. You can snell your hook if you want. Uh, but it's just tied on with the uni tied knot. Cut that off a bit there. So with the pilch, I'm just going to cut it. I always cut it on an angle, not straight down, guys. I like an angle, preferably. Um, I'll do two. I'll do one through the head and one through the body, uh, through the tail. So all I do is I just go through the eyes. You can go through here and pull it out. Uh, but I find the eyes is, enough, is good enough. They don't really care. And then just put the hook on the side like normal. It's very basic. Are you going to tie the hook on for us, man? And then just pull the line tight. Um, it's not going to spin the current because it, it can't bend, OK? It just sits like that. Um, and the hook at rate is, for me, it's very, very good. So um, I'll just turn it around that way so I don't have to turn it over. And just the weight of it in the water, it keeps the eye pretty tight on the body and it seems to work really good. Yeah. And we'll just do the tail. The tail I do a half hitch around the tail. Okay. And that again stops it from spinning. Um, if you want to you can get a pair of scissors and just trim the tail off a bit and that'll stop it from spinning as well. So you just trim off that part there. This one here's already lost one side. but <laughs> Trim off that and get it out of the way and uh, you get less, um, less spinning in the current. You don't want to spin the current next to it. Are you doing that unweighted? Unweighted, yeah. 100%. Um, but if there's current and wind, um, I will put up to about a, probably a two ball or three ball maybe, two ball. Yeah, so here just straight through, some down a little bit like so, maybe uh, 30 mil down from the end here. Pull the whole hook out. Just turn it over. Bill's has got dotted lines here, nobody put the hook through. Try and run the hook through the same area as you come out. Does that make sense? So the length of the hook's exactly that length. And then just uh, get the line, do a hitch around there over the tail. Come up about, um, maybe back about five or so mil from the end of the tail and, and just pull it in tight like that. And again, it, it doesn't spin at all. Just pass us. Excuse the smell, guys. It's, when you're not fishing, it stinks. And when you're fishing, you don't know about it. <laughs> You miss this every right. Yeah, they they got a good smell when you've been out fishing, don't they? They know all about it. Um, and then, so... If you expose the hook, yeah. what is that? If you expose the hook, um, like, they're obviously going to see the shank, but if it's concealed inside the body, it's less, like, less sticky. You don't want a big hook sticking out the other side. Yeah. It doesn't work as good. They, they're definitely, I think they have very good eyesight, dolphin fish, extremely good eyesight. And... Um, Sometimes you'll see them come up and they'll just swim away sometimes if it's not right or spinning a bit or something like that. Um, when you present it nicely, I'll always throw a handful of chopped up pillies in at the same time as throwing the bait out and they'll just, um, they just scoff it. But you see them going around, swimming around, grabbing that bit, that bit, and then they'll grab your bit. 
and that's how we do it and spread it out a bit rather than all one big bunch and that's sort of go you know like that and beat yours and then you're on um, but a lot of time when they're on you can just throw it you know in in anywhere up here and um, I'll try and do about a 30 meter cast from the boat a fair long cast I believe you get more fish that way rather than really close and cl throw close the fat doesn't work as good and, um, and that long cast then I'll just put it in the rod hole and it's, it's already it's already on you see the fish jumping over there yeah it's very quick mm. Uh, with, um, so any questions on that at all, going around? All good? We're probably already all doing that. Um, the other thing is a live bait. So when I'm fishing a live bait, I'm running um, um, just a two-hook rig. I actually haven't used this one for a while. Uh, but that's my rig from last time. But um, just two hooks like so. Um, my, I think that's on 60-pound leader or 40-pound leader. Uh, mono, not, not fluorocarbon. The hooks are only four rows. I'm keeping it fairly small because obviously um, I'm not using big slime, I'm using little yakas or whatever it might be. Um, and yeah, just hooking it. So I didn't get a, I should have another fish if I haven't got one here, but I'll grab a soft plastic and show you. Uh, was there a bigger? Cool. Yeah, I'll do it. No, I'll let you go. Uh, because fluorocarbon is too stiff when it gets up a bit heavier. So I don't like using fluorocarbon too much. Um, well, I'm light battered, I'm not saying I don't like it. I, I don't mind up to about 60 pounds, but I don't like it over that. Yeah. And don't ever use it for pattern nostrils, they don't, they don't work. It gets too twisty. I'll just cut this off here. So imagine this is a live, I don't know what this would be, a live pike maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Take a punt on it. But um, when I put the hook through, the, the back hook through, I come down at halfway and um, I don't go... The old days, I put it right through the whole body and stick it out the other side, right? These days, um, I tend to go through sort of to his spine and then I sort of push it around a bit. He doesn't like it normally. And then just pop the hook out like so. But imagine... This is actually a fair way down, down the fish, like probably a bit behind his dorsal fin, maybe. Okay. Um, and then the other one, I'll just stick up. If, if it's um, if, if you know the fish are biting and he's going to live for maybe just less than five minutes, um, I'll pin both his mouths because that's the best way for your hook to hold in and not fall out. Um, a lot of times you put it through his nose, they shake their heads. Yeah, they rattle and, off. And it rattles off and you pull the fish in sideways because that hook's still attached, but that one's not. But if you go through from the bottom through to the top, and the top's the best part to finish it off because that's the hardest part. So it's the hardest part for the hook to fall back out of. Okay? If you go the other way, it, does, it falls out easier. So, so with the dead bait, so, the hook, the live bait, the live Exactly right, because the live is a lot more attractive. <laughs> It's got action as well, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's obviously down near his dorsal, it's not there. And I normally go through the fish, I couldn't, this, this thing's too skinny. Um, but normally I go through further, so the hook's a lot less, um, uh, like, visceral. It's actually generally to the eyes, nearly hard against his body. But I'll pass that around anyhow, give you some idea. And they get scoffed pretty quick. And I suggest you haven't got a bait runner to, when you cast the live yet, leave it in, in bale open if you're using a thread line reel and it'll just take off and have your drag set. So when we're fishing out the, the 36s, say, can we get these out there? You can. So the 36 fad northeast of the seaway, the um, fad number um, three, is it? Fad number three, yeah. Um, there's always good live bait around that. Heaps, heaps of live bait around that one. Yeah. And the and the fat at the 50s northeast. There's live bait always there too. Slimies. Mo there's live bait at most of these because most of the fads are deployed on top of the reef. And um, a lot of people don't realise when they're fishing out deeper water like 36 and 50s, um, we rarely get the bait in close and take it out. We get the bait out there. Yeah, yeah it's better bait. That's what they're feeding on. And it works better. Yeah, 100%. Yep, yeah, that's it. Again, work out your drift and 
how far you're drifting and work it all out and then drop down and and I use I always use colour line on my Sibiki rod so I can see I know the, the right amount of line out because you're going to use some small sinker and sometimes your lines I think so sometimes your lines um, that people especially got a mate doing it for you you're back in the boat they just let out all the line it's like where we're going and you're never going to get them yeah. you want with bait jigs work best nearly vertical yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, you don't want too much slack in your line or anything you won't mm. feel them bite so sorry just to recap in mm. basically any structure out there we could find libraries or probably mm, they're in patches and they're not, they're not always on the structure but they they're generally out there somewhere yeah. in the area yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like you might yeah. have a bait ball on the top, or like there's a few yeah, other scenarios, but yeah. Filters maybe, but Will you yeah. On your yeah, you see yeah. the sounder, yeah, definitely. And and if you but if you get the bigger isolated ones on the sounder, it's the dolphin fish. They screw up like a bait school, it's like a bait school, but they're not. It's not solid color. It's just um, they're actually fish. Yeah. Um, you drop a bait jig down there, but if you get hooked a bait on, I think they get it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Would you pick up any amber jig and pick up the attention? Yeah, so I'm casting lures, I get shit loads around the fades. Only little ones, legal size, jigging at 100% too as well. Uh, but they're only like 60 centimetres. They're le just legal, you know. Um, but they're nice eating. And good, great fun to catch on, like here. Yeah. Uh, but I've caught, I get a lot of high fin amberjack, a lot of high fin amberjack. Um, I've cast kings amberjack and, and high fin amberjack uh, all along uh, those sort of lures. Okay. Yeah. You don't yeah. go the longer lure? No, no, they, they jump on it. Okay. And, up, and they're up on the surface too, which is very unusual in, in especially on the 50 fathom reef. Yeah. yeah, they're up on the surface. Hmm. Yeah, they do. They they do go right through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You'll find that when it's a little bit of pressure on the dolphin fish now when they're at the smallest, which I, we should all be letting them grow a bit bigger for another couple of weeks. Um, but they get pretty from this weekend on. They get pretty hammered, I think. Um, but once the little blacks start, the pressure comes off a lot because guys go chase some little blacks, and and a few guys will go chase dolphin fish. Normally, the bottom fishermen go chase the dolphin fish. Um, because the bottoms, the current's too strong. So they'll switch, and the, a lot of the other guys will chase um, uh, marlin <coughs> or whatever. And then the mackerel will come on, and the pressure gets even less again. It's just now's the hard time. It's hard not to go out there and get the little ones because it's so easy to catch. We're, better off, we're all better off waiting a few more weeks, but if we don't, somebody else is going to go. So, yeah. The thinking is just whoever gets there first is going to get them, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Um, any questions on that at all, guys? Oops. Are they easy to put back, the dolphins? Yeah, they're not too bad. Um, like, obviously, the little ones, we throw them back. And we don't normally keep them under about 70, 70 centimetres. What's the uh, 50, 50, I think. Small. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very small. Yeah, yeah so too small. Yeah. yeah. Is it 50 or 60? I think it's 60. It's 60, is it? Yeah, Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, even 60 is too small. Yeah, and they're, they're small, they're very thin, they're like wafer thin, yeah. But soon they'll start bulking up. You, the, you get a few guys say, oh, I don't catch the dolphin fish, they, they're full of pus. And it's like, that, what they mean with that is, like sometimes you, I have had it myself and you get a dolphin fish and when you get a fill of it, if you ever caught one of those kingies from down the nine mile, which happens sometimes, you get a fill of it and just the, the flesh just oozes out like, like running. It's very unusual. Um, and it does happen with dolphin fish as well. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a parasite internal or if it's, um, I don't know what's to do with, but um, there are dolphin fish that do do that. And I've had big dolphin fish do the same too. If you want to put the knife in and it just deflates, like you just let the hot air of a balloon and all this stuff comes out. Um, but that's generally not the case. They're generally really nice to eat. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? Things? That's about it, probably, yeah. yeah. So no questions at all, guys? OK, I'll give you a weather report for this weekend. Um, look, Tuesday, I mean, sorry, um, tomorrow is probably the, the day in the morning, and tomorrow is, like, the hottest bite of this month. It's like a three fish, 99.9% .9 bite rate all day and night. <laughs> um, and then it's 
Saturday's similar, but the weather Saturday's coming in crap. 20 knots of northerly, and then Sunday did look like it was going to be okay in the morning, but now it's looking sort of iffy. Like 10 o'clock, there's like a window of four to seven knots, I think, for an hour. And the morning's, morning's about 10 to 12, I think. Um, depends how far out you go to, of course, but it's northerly. Okay, and then, um, then Sunday afternoon comes in windy again. Uh, next Tuesday, Wednesday, get, get time through the week, it looks really good. Sort of five to eight knots all day, which we all hate because that's <laughs> it's not the weekend. Um, but anyhow, it is what it is. Um, so let's hope the following weekend maybe. But um, during on Tuesday, Wednesday, though the fish bite's terrible. It's, it's a one fish bite, which is not a good fish bite. I'm a big believer, big believer in saloon charts and fish bites. And those of you who follow it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And those of you who don't, you need to start following it. Where can we find it? Uh, it's actually, even on the, I just noticed the Windy app even has on it now. So if you get the Windy app, download it, it actually shows a little fish, the saloon a bite above it yeah. on each day, which is really good. Yeah, i tell you, like, uh, the period that's best. And, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, bite period. Best time bite. Yeah, all that. Yeah. It's on the Windy app. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. So, um... Yeah, you actually click on the go down the bottom and tells yeah. you the time of the day as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so so accurate. If it like who was out last Sunday? Who was out last Sunday? It wasn't a bad day. Only guys went out? What do you guys do? Some guys want to go to Oh my gosh. Okay. Um so uh, last Sunday was one of those no bite days. And it was very hard fishing for most people. It was a little bit of a bite time here and there for about half an hour, and a couple of snap were caught. Um, and even the flat air was hard going. Yeah, it was tough. We normally bank them bad. We got like six all day. We normally get like 60 or 20, 30. Um, it was the same. the same for you guys too? Yeah. yeah. It's re- That's right. Yeah. So, and the, and when I first, first I got home and looked at the chart, it was like, like no fish day, like, like half a fish. You know? so, yeah. Shit, and it's all day. So yeah, that's right. it's lots. really weird. But I bet you if you get tomorrow, are you going to get it tomorrow morning? Anybody going tomorrow morning? No one? No. Okay, tomorrow morning's like a three day. It's 99.9% hottest bite, that's what it's called. It's called Windy. W I N D Y. Is it a premium Uh There's, I think it might cost a little bit, but not much. There's another one, it's just Tides number four fishing. And that's another good one. Yeah. yeah, tides for fishing, yeah. What was yeah. the first one? Is it something like... Windy. Tide bites or something? Yeah, Windy has the tide bites on it. Yeah, Windy. Uh, yep. There was another one you mentioned before that. Um, t- tides for fishing. Oh, yeah. Tides for fishing. Yeah, there's another site, yep. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the Coast Watch, which I used to watch all the time, it, it has Windy on Coast Watch now. Um, I don't know if it has that feature on that Windy one, though. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, so Coast Watch I used to love because it had everything on there, uh, but it's it's they're bringing it back together again now, so hopefully they'll work out alright. Um, yeah. Okay. So anyhow, guys. So the weekend's looking a bit. How you going? <laughs> but predictions do change. Like it's been wrong every other weekend, so you never know. It's still early, early days. Early days. So guys, so you all clued up. Everyone, anyone got any questions at all? Any questions? He's got to get there and do it. He's got to get there and do it and and try and um, be politically correct when you're f- fishing other guys. Um, and if they're being assholes, then you tell them, I tell them. Just tell them. Yeah. I've got a, a quick question. Mm. Just regarding make, allowing crimps. Mm. When you're crimping um, nylon, or mm. just where it's um, can you open the crimp? You can a little bit, but not too bad. The thing is the way you do crimp it. So. Um, if this is the crimp, most you, you use the aluminium crimps for a start and they're oval shaped like that. Yep. And you should never crimp it um, this way, you crimp it that way. So the crimp goes in uh, that way and the, the jaw goes over there and over there. And you start about a mill either side, inside of the crimp. So it has a little flange at the end, doesn't cut your line. Yeah, don't do it and right on the yeah. edge of the crimp, otherwise it'll cut your line, it's very sharp. So, so that crimp that was originally that shape, sort of thing, will end up being looking like, um, sort of a lot shallower, of course, uh, with a little flange at the either end there, sorry. Yeah, little flange there. 
and it'll be compressed and you might have two compressed marks in it. There might be a little bump in the middle here, a little bump in there, and you've crimped it sort of um, that side and that side. If it's a long crimp, so a long crimp, you do two crimps on it. You know how when you, you crimp it right up, it's, it has that um, ridge along the sides? Yeah. Sort of yeah. Like the excess material gathers. Yeah. Have you crimped it too far at that point? No, not at all. Not really. No, that's nah. just the way it is. Yeah. Yep. No, you'll always get a little wing on either side. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. Big thing is you want it to be a snug fit when you double it yeah. back around and go back through too. Like you don't want it to be real loose in there because yeah. yeah. then you will get those massive wings and won't close properly. Yeah, the little wings on the side of that and just a little flange either side. Yeah. The so idea is to... Sorry, So I get the tag. Yes. And you go back up and return it through again. Yeah, some guys do that if the crimp's too big. And they seem yep. to yeah. yeah. I haven't had any fail since doing that. That's right. So. Yeah. So that's a good thing. If your crimps are maybe oversized, and that's what we got on the boat, um, you either cut a bit off of one of your leaders and put a little, a little spacer in there, and it'll all crimp up together fine. It'll be fine. Or you'll um, do a return and put a return on it, and it works fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just yeah, different set of crimp pliers. Don't use the crimp pliers with the teeth in it. I use those on wire if you want to. But even why I don't use the old hollow crimps, I use the, the figure eight one and use the same crimping pliers as I use on the mono and it rolls the wire over each other and it works it's better. Yeah. And those you can go right to the end. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Any questions on anything fishing guys for the next time? Till next time. <laughs> no, nah, you guys are all ready to roll. Okay, cool. Good. <laughs> so um, we've got um I got burnt lips from last weekend. We've got a, thanks so. we've got a, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a bag full of, um, actually it's about the only 300 bucks worth tonight, first prize, it's actually tonight is uh, lures, line, a teaser, jigs, a lot of, a lot of lures, um, and the second prize I think it's about nearly 200 and then about 140, then about 90, then it goes down from there. Um, but next seminar we're doing in a couple of time, a few weeks time is on the 16th, 17th or 16th of December. So we've got Peter Bakula coming along doing a talk on pelagics, um, money black marlin fishing. Um, okay, first one. This is it. It's down your way too, but it's number 20. Hey. It is you. Hey. <laughs> Come here, Uncle Robbie. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. That one there. What's your name, mate? Oh. Yeah, Doug. Pleasure to meet you, buddy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Enjoy, buddy. Thanks, mate. Now, see, those who speak out get, get paid for it. They're speaking up. <laughs> okay. Um, Stu, if you want to read yep. them out, how's that sound, buddy? Sounds good. Okay. Next one. Number 12. So it should be David. Well done, Dave. Congratulations, mate. Good on you, buddy. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Okay, next one is... Number 21. It's very close. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> Good on you, buddy. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll try and get a front row up here, guys. Get the prize first. Uh. <laughs> Do I, is I missing a prize? How many has gone out so far? Is it three? Yeah. Oh, there's three there. Okay, cool. Sorry. Oh. Number 13. Well done, buddy. It's good to see new faces get, get prizes. Well done, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Okay, next one. Everyone, thanks for coming along. Stu, you can pick this one. <laughs> thanks, Stu. It is number eight. Number eight. Getting closer. Well done, mate. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And the last one, there's a couple little lures 
is everyone thanks for coming along too um, we'll let you out downstairs um, we'll get we'll just do a race down under it for you and um, fish oh, sorry fish coat. Fish coat. oh yes okay I'll tell you about this thing yeah, before I call it the last one I need your attention okay we've got this new thing um, where we uh, and the boys they're watching from last time from the mango jack code we're going to do and you got to have a picture it's the biggest fish for the next month okay so you got you got till the end of December and the biggest um, uh, and that's hard to measure at 1.5 meter um, I do have 1.4 meter measurement so <laughs> 1.5 meter dolphin fish or something but um, the biggest dolphin fish or the best fit the best picture um, will have a another bag of goodies worth about 300 bucks which we'll give out to the best picture. So on the Mango Jack one, the code's MJ. So when they take a picture, they've got a little MJ next to the Mango Jack from last seminar. And for you guys, it's DF, okay? So dolphin fish. Okay, so just DF, put it on your measure mat or put a sticker on there or something, whatever you want to do. Or you can write it down and hold it in front of the camera. Um, and we draw that at the end of December, okay? Just to try and keep you guys interactive. Um, now that I've got your attention, it's number 11. Got one you sure? Yeah. Mate, absolute gentleman. For that, you get a set of crimson pipes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Cheers, mate. Good buddy. Okay, redraw. Okay, it's number five. We're getting at the front now. Good on you, mate. It's a dress, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Ray. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Guys, for those who have driven a long way, thanks for coming along today. Um, we're here 24-7, not quite, but nearly. And um, we can help you out on anything and we match any pricing, okay? And we're stocked up.